When I hear something crazy, I've done more fighting as a Jedi than during my entire Sith training. Jedi always win because Sith don't practice enough. Case closed. More like Jedi don't have to worry about getting stabbed in the back by their peers. Well, usually. Not easy playing backup to the greatest Jedi warrior in the galaxy. Won't even pretend we'll ever be equals, but I've got some new moves to try out next time we're in a fight. Don't surprise me with anything. What kind of stunts are you planning? Just taking a few pages from your flashy playbook. Promise not to upstage you. So, when do I get my own Padawan? Always wanted to be a teacher. Patience. You'll have your wish someday. And that student will be in excellent hands. Be a shame not to share my wisdom. Been racking it up fast lately. Here, pretend you're my Padawan. Got a hypothetical moral dilemma for you. Say you could only save the Republic or the Jedi Order. Which would you choose and why? Don't think. Answer. That's too big a question not to put a little thought into. This is too late. The Jedi Order and the Republic are both dead. Happy? Correct answer was Jedi Order, by the way. Without us around to protect it, the Republic can't survive. Jedi can exist without the Republic, but not the other way around? Interesting notion. Puts this war in perspective, doesn't it? We're not fighting for them. They're fighting for us. This teaching thing's fun. Have to do it again sometime. Keep wondering what it'll take to put the Sith Empire down for good. Kill the Emperor? Destroy Korriban? No reason to stop there. The Sith have plenty of other strongholds. Exactly. We could stay busy the rest of our lives. No victory over the Sith ever lasts. We wipe them out, they turn up again. Doesn't feel like we're winning. The cycle of war has to end. Maybe you'll discover how to break it. Solve a millennia-old problem by myself? No pressure there. Guess there is one thing we can count on. No matter how many times they come back, the Sith always go down in flames. Your people speaking of the Empire sound like a distorted echo. When I was born, we thought the rest of the galaxy to be mystery and legend. We had been alone for a thousand years. What was it like? I can't even imagine. We were what you made us. In my youth, Jedi were how you threatened errant children. Obey your masters or the Jedi will obliterate you. For thousands of years, we had total control of a hundred star systems. Then the Jedi drove us to the farthest fringe of the galaxy. That was generations ago. Do people really still care? Did your people still care to fear us when we re-emerged? This is hardly worth debating. I gain nothing from understanding how your Republic's fools view the galaxy. I am surprised that once your council finishes its brainwashing, any Jedi has a spine left to oppose the Emperor. Perhaps you are young enough to still cultivate the strength of the Sith. I'm open to Sith tricks. What have you got? The dark side is no trick, Jedi. When you release the control the Jedi Council has drilled into you, when you feel anger in your every connection to the Force, when you accept that a woman must use any means necessary to prove her strength, then you will have discovered the dark side. I do not know how more to prepare you to face the Emperor. What has your training been? All I know of Jedi ways is from Revan. Surely they have changed in 300 years. How does someone become the Emperor's Wrath? There has only ever been one. My training as a Sith was not far different than Korriban today. Only my visions set me apart, made them bring me before the Emperor. In his presence, I first saw who he was and what he planned. You should have cut his throat. 
Saved us all a lot of trouble. I would have been rent to pieces before my hand touched the hilt of my lightsaber. I alone could not defeat him, so I chose to wait for one who could. I thought Revan and the Jedi Exile were my chance. That was 300 years ago. Obviously it didn't work out. I hoped it would. I was their eyes and ears in the Sith Academy. Their most trusted ally. I liked them. I would have served them, but my vision told me they would fail. I cut down the exile and brought Revan to the Emperor as a gift. Is that when he made you his executioner? The only way to live long enough to find the Jedi who would kill the Emperor, to find you, was to convince him to trust me. He took my offering and gave me a place at his side. He gave me immortality. It was a gift, but not without its price. It has been enlightening to spend so much time among you and your Jedi. For 300 years I have spoken to no one but Sith, and they do not change. They are the same on Korriban now as in my childhood. The same tricks, the same fights, the same groveling and mind control. Was that almost a compliment? I am only surprised that I have learned the most of the Force from a Jedi. Revan taught me to be effective when I became the Emperor's Wrath. And now I have learned as much from you. You have opened my eyes as well. And here I thought you weren't listening. I have sought the Emperor's death for so long, yet I cannot picture the galaxy without him. When I was born, the Emperor was the Empire. Everything existed to feed his whims. He was so far above us, no one, Sith or slave, would have dared even form an opinion about him. I'd say joining Revan to kill him counts as an opinion. When I began serving him, I thought it was far simpler than that. The Emperor was just a man, isolated by unimaginable power and the inability to trust the scheming sycophants who served him. I was wrong. He is a disease that must be stopped before it ravages us. I will stop him. Then heed me. Immortality comes at a terrible price. Taste. Smell. Touch. Color. Emotion. The Emperor and I experience none of these things. We are no longer mortal. When you face the Emperor, do not forget that. <laughs>